Okay. Okay. So we are live, Mom. So I want to welcome everyone. Um, anyone that knows my mom and I, we kind of live in the moment. And mom wanted to share a prayer and a teaching. And then we were going to talk about our Seeds of Life webinar series. Um, I don't think my mom, grandmother Flora de Mayo, needs much of an introduction. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and let mom guide us in a prayer and do a teaching. Thanks, mom. Okay. Good morning, Heather. Thank you so much. I'm I'm glad that we're getting together, you in Idaho and me in uh, New Mexico and uh, all of our friends out there in the four directions. It's a good way to get together. Um, today on, on the Mayan calendar is the, um, the day of um, Kawuk. If I am absolutely correct. <laughs> And I am. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Your brain is still working perfect, Mom. Well, it's it's working. It's early, and it's good. <laughs> the, the day of Kawuk is the day of for the community. It's the day in which we um, bring the community together, and it's a very auspicious day. So let's get together and and do a prayer. Um, Beloved creator, beloved mother, beloved father, heart of the heavens, heart of the earth, beloved beauty, thank you. Thank you for bringing us together at this particular moment, beloved creator. It is a moment in which we need to embrace each other. It is a day for the community of the community and to remind ourselves that we are a community wherever we are. To remind ourselves that we as humans need each other. And without each other, we're not doing what we are here to do. We're here to pray together and to dialogue together to dream together and to vision together, not only for the moment, but for the future generations. Beloved creator, I ask of you on this sacred day, we send blessings to each and every one that is listening at this particular moment that they receive the light, that heavenly light, the light from the stars, beloved creator. Let it shine the road and the path in which we are walking. Releasing and letting go of any uncertainty, of any doubt, beloved creator. Allowing us to remember that it is through the light the spirit of the sacredness that we are able to heal our bodies, our mind, our spirit, beloved creator, so that we can continue on our journey. We have been going through difficult times already for quite some time. Many, many, many families around the globe have been affected as my family has been affected by the COVID that is running or making rampant is all over the place, beloved creator. And so we're holding everyone in our hearts at this very, very moment, bringing love and asking them to release and let go of anything that might be standing in their way and to envision that we can make the road a lot easier if each and every one of us put our minds together because it is through the collective 
that we can make things better for the future generations. So I asked to, for each and every one of us to hold each other, hold the light in your heart, hold the light in your mind throughout the day and to have a beautiful, beautiful day. And when you think of something, think of your neighbor, think of those close to you, think of those that are far away from you and send them the love and the light that it is so needed at this very moment. In the name of all that is beautiful, in the name of the sacred light, in the name of the great mystery, thank you so, so much. So I wanted to share with you on this particular day, this, um, this beautiful, beautiful teaching that has helped me to get through. Um, this teaching started um, some time ago. Um, I was um, with my teacher, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a background. I was with my teacher, Don Alejandro, in Copan. Uh, this is um, one of the Mayan uh, sacred sites in uh, Honduras. And he was, um, teaching us and doing some readings of, of the Stellas. And I remember seeing this picture writing there. And as he was teaching, I had my focus on this picture writing. And I realized that he did not speak about it. So I said to him in private later on, I said to him, um, Don Alejandro, um, I realized that you did not um, speak about this particular glyph and I explained it to him as much as I could. And his answer at the moment was, um, you know, at the moment he didn't think about it. Um, so it's kind of the way that it went. But he said to me, if you're interested in knowing about it, he said, why don't you pray on it and uh, see what the invisible ones reveal to you. So I took that and I said, okay. So I prayed for quite some time, something like a year. And um, I was doing something very, very mundane at the temple of the golden child something like uh, scrubbing the floor. And I heard the invisible voice calling me and saying, Flor de Mayo, about the glyph. And that kind of brought my attention to the invisible voice. I dropped everything that I was doing and I said, yes, yes. And I remember looking all over the room to see if I would see someone connected to the voice, but I did not see that. What I saw was more like the picture in my mind of what was being said. And so the diagram goes like this. I'm gonna show you. The diagram is, is an oval and in the middle of the oval, there's a line. And on each side, there are two windows like that. On the right side of the window, this little window on the right, had kind of like this checkered side. So it looked um, obscure. And on the other side, on the left side, it was the bigger, the bigger side that is obscured.
So it kind of looks like this. So the voice said to me, imagine that this line right here is your sacred path and this is your, your destiny here. And every day you make a decision to walk on your left side, which is the monastic of mundane, sorry about that, the mundane side of us. And on the right side is the monastic. And so this is our everyday life and this is our life of prayer. And with every step, whether you are left or right, left or right on your journey, you are making that decision that you're walking this way or that way either in prayer or in your everyday life with family, children, husbands, work, all of that, that is with everyday life. And so the voice said, um, in the mundane, you have this window here. And even though you're busy and with very little time to do anything else, you still have moments of clarity. And in the monastic side, you have moments of darkness. And so the beauty of this, in the way that I thought about it, is for us to see the balance that has been put there before us, not by us, but by the universe. And so we make choices every day in our lives as we walk. But ultimately, we have to make a decision of how to keep ourselves balanced. In the, in the teachings, as it continue, one of the questions that I had for um, the invisible being, I said, after I was shown this, I said, can you tell me a little bit about, um, in the teachings of the Maya, they say that we're the children of today, yesterday and tomorrow. And so the voice uh, said to me, imagine a pearl of necklace. And, and so I saw this necklace around the drawing and we're just going to make believe that we are doing these pearls around the face. And I'll show you in one moment here. And so the pearls look like that. And he and the voice said to me, imagine that you, Flor de Mayo, are this little pearl right here. And this little pearl had light around it. It was actually the pearl was like a yellow color. And the voice said to me, and you, in your everyday life, move about on your left and on your right. One takes you into the future and the other one takes you into the past. And as I was looking at the picture, I could see 
that the beads were connected with a yellow, um, like a yellow thread. And so there was this connection to every, to every pearl in this um, golden thread. And I saw myself coming from here, going down the right and then going down the left. And before I knew it, I was making like a whole circle and moving about. And I started to realize about dreams that we have our dreams and visions of the past and how we have dreams and visions of the future and our dreams and vi visions of the moment. And I started to feel um, very comfortable about that. And it was not like, it was this huge mystery that I did not understand. So I'm trying to say is that it um, brought contentment in my heart to know that this is the way that um, we respond in our everyday life, knowing that no matter how much we pray, even if we spend a lifetime in prayer, we're still going to have difficult times and dark, um, um, uh, darkness and dark times. We're not immune from that. And if we're here, no matter how difficult our mundane life, I mean, even, you know, spending a lifetime in jail, um, we have moments of clarity and, and light in, in our existence. And so this here is extremely important for us to meditate on, especially on this uh, sacred day of uh, community. So this is the, the sweet lesson that I wanted to share with you. And uh, we're going to put it up and keep it up so that you can go back and to listen to it again and again. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. And I know I'll, I'll upload it to your YouTube channel. And, um, you know, I would encourage everyone to join our mailing list. You can um, go to either my mom's website, Grandmother Florida Mayo, or the follow the golden path um, dot org and sign up for our newsletter. And I know the other thing that we started doing is we're doing our Seeds of Life webinar series. And, you know, our purpose with this was to hopefully inspire the seed within each of us to grow whole. And one of my mom's um, passions and the foundation of the path is preserving heirloom seeds. And we are a tiny nonprofit. Um, mainly, um, we're able to sustain ourselves by donors that become members. Um, or annually we would do a art auction and now we're doing these little webinar series. Um, we noticed this past year that a lot of our members just weren't able to continue with us due to the pandemic, due to the economy. So we started offering the Seeds of Life Wisdom Series. And it's kind of two parts. We have the first part, which is sharing wisdom centered around heirloom seeds, um, or it could be climate or the environment. Um, we have one coming up this Tuesday with Tim Guinea who deals with climate change and we're pretty excited about that. My um, daughter Kaya is actually putting a really fabulous handout about how we can, um, about climate change and our footprint that we leave um, in nature. And then the second part is we have elders or wisdom keepers or indigenous, um, you know, people coming to join us. And a lot of them happen to be my mom's friends and they are dialogues um, and they last anywhere from, a, a, you know, one hour to two and a half hours, depending on how deep we go. Um, we do record them. There is a limited um, amount of people that can 
participate at one time because it is just mom and me uh, running the Zoom. And, you know, with that being said, we hope that you can join us for as many as you can. Um, we do ask for a nominal registration fee. And part of that, uh, with one part of the series, the seed part and the environment part, we have a co-sponsor with the Rocky Mountain Seed Alliance. And what we try to do is we give an honorarium to each elder, each expert. We also um, will give a small donation to the Rocky Mountain Seed Alliance and the rest of the proceeds help the path. So it's a way to help the path sustain itself because um, normally we would have an art auction. We weren't able to do that because of the pandemic. Normally we would have our members helping sustain us and because of the economy, we've just lost a lot of members um, in that respect. And it's also a good way that you can um, share some wisdom with my mom um, and it's a positive thing to do. Mom, do you have anything else to say about, um, about that? Um, you know, for us to really think about community and how we can help each other. Um, today, it is the spirit of that. Um, you know, we can't, we can't do this work without you. And we're here of service. And I'm calling upon you to, um, you know, to, so that, you know, we can share with you and, um, and, and become that community that, um, that our um, generations back, you know, put together these sacred days in the calendar to, to remind us on how to, um, to live in balance on a daily basis. So uh, today is a very auspicious day where, um, we come together as a community and share. So that's that's what I like to say at the moment. Thanks, Mom. And you know, some of the ones that we've had in the past, we are going to make available as um, recordings. But I would encourage everyone to sign up for those that they're interested in. They're all incredible dialogues, incredible speakers that we have. Um, you will receive a recording if you can't join us live or you live in another time zone or you want to watch it at your own convenience and you will get a beautiful handout for each webinar that we kind of um, that we do with each speaker that's always different. Um, Mom, do you want to end us with a short little prayer for the day? Thank you, beloved mother. Thank you for allowing us to send our voices out into the four directions and out into the universe so that we could be heard right now at this very moment, so that we could be heard out in the future. And of course, our voice will be heard in the past. Thank you, beloved creator, for the beauty of the moment and allowing us to come together. Much blessings of love and light to everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. And um, thank you, everyone. And we hope you'll join us on our series and hope that the seeds of wisdom grow within you. And thank you so much. Many blessings and have a beautiful day. Okay. Love and light. Bye. Bye.